How much does it cost to create an application that uses artificial intelligence? I'm going to be answering that question in today's video. I'm going to be explaining the difference between API billing and ChatGPT Pro billing. I'm going to be explaining exactly what tokens are, the difference between input and output tokens, and I'm going to be going over some sample Python code to actually track this stuff. It's going to be awesome. Let's go. So it turns out AI is not free, which is honestly a pretty big bummer. I like using AI a lot. I think it's a cool technology. I think hopefully it's going to improve our lives. And some people think it's going to kill us all, in which case we'd have to pay for that privilege of it murdering us all. Regardless, in the meantime, we're going to have to pay to use it at all, at least if we want to use any of the cool features. And what I have open for you guys is my ChatGPT subscription. And we can see here that I'm subscribed to the plus version of ChatGPT, which gives me everything in free, thank goodness. And it also gets me extended limits on messaging, access to some of the cooler, newer models. And for this privilege, I pay $20 a month. And I pay $20 a month regardless of how much I use ChatGPT. If I only send it one request throughout the entire month, I'm going to pay $20. And if I'm using it constantly, using it as my diary, writing my feelings, my thoughts, and my dreams, and having deep conversations with the AI, over the AI overlords, I'm still going to pay $20 a month. It doesn't really matter. But this word limit here is key. I don't have unlimited access to ChatGPT. And if I start using it too much, I'm going to get cut off and have to wait till the next month. And this intuitively makes sense to me at least because OpenAI has to pay money to actually run these models and make it possible for me to have my conversations about my feelings or whatever. And at a certain point, if I'm hogging up all of the resources that they have and are paying for to run the models, they're going to be losing money on $20 a month. And that's why they have these limits here. If we go over to ChatGPT, I want to do a little demonstration here. We're going to have it do the following. Write a story about a man who was lost at sea. The story should not be longer than 50 words. It should not contain any superfluous information. And we're going to go ahead and have ChatGPT output a story for us. I don't really want to read it. I don't think it's going to be very good. But I want us to think about this didn't cost me any extra money because, again, I paid $20 at the beginning of the month and I'll pay $20 at the beginning of next month. But... How much did this cost OpenAI? And if I wanted to actually embed artificial intelligence into my application, into a Python application, let's say, how much would I have to pay to actually run this query? And what would affect the cost? As I mentioned, if you're sending more and more pieces of text, that's going to cost OpenAI more money. And so that should probably cost you more money, at least if you're an API customer. And if you've ever paid an electric bill, you actually probably already have a pretty good intuition for how the pricing of AI works. If you use more electricity, let's say it's the summer, you live somewhere hot and the AC is on constantly, you're going to be spending a lot more money than maybe in the spring when the weather's better and you don't need the AC blasting all day. You have a meter on your house and a meter is something that the electrical company installs to track down to the precise kilowatt hour how much electricity you're using. And then based on how much electricity they're using, they can convert that into a dollar amount. The API usage of AI like ChatGPT and Anthropics Claude works very similar to this electric meter model. And what I mean by that is if we go over to the API pricing, we see that we're charged for GPT-40 Mini 15 cents per million input tokens and 60 cents per million output tokens. And is a GPT-40 Mini smarter slower and more expensive cousin GPT-40 is $2.50 per million input tokens and $10 per million output tokens. And when we're talking about input tokens, and I'll explain what a token is in a minute, that would correspond to anything you're typing in the prompt. And when we're talking about output tokens, that's anything that ChatGPT said. So this is the response from ChatGPT. So this, this section here, because ChatGPT wrote it, if I called this via the API, that would be billed in the output section. So these would cost $10 per million of them. And this section here, the part that I wrote, that would be the input tokens. So those would correspond to $2.50. What is a token? Well, OpenAI has a website they put up called the tokenizer. And what you do with the tokenizer is you take the raw text and they'll convert it to tokens. Why do we need to convert it to tokens in the first place? Well, the models themselves don't actually work on raw text. They work on these things called tokens, which are numbers, and they don't actually write raw text. They write tokens, which again are numbers. And there's a way to convert words and pieces of words to and from tokens. And that allows you to, as the user, only see text, which is a lot more useful. 
If we go and look at the output of the tokenizer, we can see that this prompt had 32 tokens and a token is not quite a word. And if we look here, every new color corresponds to a new token. So write a story about a man, blah, blah, blah. And if we should, let's pay close attention to this word superfluous, which is a longer word. And notice how the word superfluous got broken up into three tokens, super, flu, us. Those are the three tokens that correspond to the word. I think in general, one word of English corresponds to about 0.75 tokens. That's not an exact formula. As we can see here, the word write corresponded to one token, as did most of the other words in this prompt. And if you're actually curious, the token IDs are visible here as well. So this is actually the raw input to the model, this vector of tokens, not this raw text here. Once we have the list of tokens, so this is 32 input tokens, that would correspond to 32 times 250 divided by 1 million. That would be how much that co would cost me if I was using the API. And the output tokens, you would just grab this and you would paste that into the tokenizer. And that's 71 output tokens. So that would be 71 times $10 divided by 1 million. And then you would add that to the number we calculated earlier for the input tokens. And if you combine those two, that would be the full cost of this interaction here. And again, that's if you're an API customer. If you're using ChatGPT, you pay $20 at the beginning of the month and you get on with your life. Let's actually go into PyCharm now because I have the exact same thing set up, but we're gonna use the API this time. And if you look, I have this function, it's called compute cost. And this little exercise we did here where we looked at the pricing on the website, this has now been translated into code. And when I said that 4 Mini is the dumber, faster, cheaper cousin of 4 that's reflected very clearly in the pricing. So the number of input tokens are billed at 15 cents per million for GPT-40 Mini versus $2.50 per for GPT-40. So more than 10x more expensive. And we can see that this is the formula that I was just describing here. And so if we run this prompt here, what it's gonna do is just make an API call and then we're gonna parse the response. And in the API response, they give you this thing called the usage. And the usage object is gonna tell you how many tokens were used in your input and your output. I'm not gonna talk about exactly why the output tokens are so much more expensive, but just know that it is a lot more resource intensive when these models are yapping and continue to output a bunch of stuff. It's much cheaper for them to be concise. So just keep that in mind if you're using the API, the output tokens are going to be more expensive and they're also gonna have a much larger effect on the latency. Large number of output tokens will be much slower than a large number of input tokens in most cases. Anyway, as we can see here, and by the way, this was using GPT-40, the price was pretty low. This was a pretty small prompt and I just did one. And based on these numbers, and if we do 40 mini, it should be like a lot, a lot more cheap. Yeah, this is significantly cheaper. Again, more than 10x cheaper. It should become clear how the $20 a month could be profitable for OpenAI, or at least they're not hemorrhaging money on a price point like that. You would have to use a lot of ChatGPT to even get up to a dollar of usage. And for that reason, $20 a month, they probably have a nice margin on there. I bet they would have a decent margin. And this is even with all the VC subsidies. The thing is with the API though, if you, depending on the type of application you're creating, you might be using AI to go through lots and lots of large documents. And if you're doing that, and especially if you're doing that a lot, these costs really start to add up quickly. And the maximum number of input tokens you can use for GPT-40 Mini or GPT-40 is, I believe, 128,000. And that's a lot of text. You probably wouldn't be able to type that all in yourself. That, that would be you know, a novel, potentially. But if you're looking at documents at scale, you can easily start to spend a lot of money. So you do need to be careful. And it is really important as an API user that you're actually tracking this stuff. Let's actually go to Anthropic API pricing. And Anthropic, as you might know, is a competitor to OpenAI. They offer similar models. And if we look here, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is roughly equivalent to GPT-40. I know it's very different and it has its things that it's better at, like coding. But if you look here, they're charging $3 per million input and $15 per million output. So that is a decent amount. It's 50% more expensive for output token and it's a little bit more expensive for, per input token. They also have Claude 3.5 Haiku, and this is also a decent amount more expensive than GPT-40 Mini, although it's probably comparable in terms of quality. And if you're an API user, 
you probably don't want to get married to OpenAI or Anthropic. You don't want to base your entire success of your application on a single frontier model. And what a lot of people do is they're connected to Anthropic, they're connected to OpenAI, they're connected to Gemini, all of the big players. And all of the players are billed in the same way. It's, it's the electrical company model, the metered model, the usage model. And if you're a developer, the prices really do matter. If, if, if you're doing something that, doesn't, that isn't that complicated, why would you pay more for Claude 3.5 Sonnet if GPT-40 does the trick? And that's a question that a lot of people are asking themselves. And these companies like Anthropic and OpenAI, they are in a race, they are in a price war. Because if 3.5 Sonnet became half as expensive overnight, a lot of people would probably switch over to 3.5 Sonnet immediately overnight because the APIs are more or less identical. The way that things behave is basically the same. The latency is very similar. And so it really just starts to become a cost thing unless it's a specific task that the model does a lot better. And in Sonnet's case, that, that generally is coding and technical stuff. But if you're coming through documents, it might not be as obvious or it might not even be better at all. And anyway, I just wanted to do a quick video explaining all this stuff. I think it's interesting to understand like the business model of these companies and how the application, the chat application is a very different, has a very different customer potentially than the API customer and how API customers, these numbers do look small and it is smart that they're doing, you know, per million input token. It sounds like you have a lot to work with, but you can quickly start to spend a large amount of money. I do think these prices are going to go down as there's more advancements in GPU technology and more advancements in inference pipelines, making them more efficient and just based on competition. I mean, again, if Anthropic overnight halves their prices, that's going to kind of light a fire under open AIs, but forcing them to compete because people will just switch overnight. They are becoming commoditized in that regard. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. Please give it a like. Why don't you subscribe while you're at it and have a great day.